Hello! Final faction have returned, which means last time they were just the penultimate faction. I don't know how that works, but I do know that Dollar Tree in America have produced a load more very cheap, ultra affordable action figures for the kids, and I am here for it. Yes, they are a dollar each still. Well, actually, I've heard in some areas they're being sold for $1.25, so maybe there has been a slight increase in the price, depending on where you live. But the fact remains, we need to look at every single thing we can possibly get that's Final Faction related, because, frankly, these things astonish me for the amount of money they put them out for. So, quick catch up, if you remember last time, there is the Final Faction, which is a small group of people who are fighting with, like, super duper high tech weaponry against small incursions from evil aliens. Quite why they're the only people doing something against this alien invasion force, I don't know. Most countries have armies and stuff. But let's not worry too much about that. So they are led, I believe, by Sergeant Steadfast. No, Ma Master Sergeant Steadfast. That was it. Not to be confused with Master Chief. He's got a robot arm and a beard and a gun and all that kind of stuff. I think he had a hat, but I haven't got that here. Uh, there's Sergeant Ruck, who has a big gun and big boots, and he's got some sort of thing on his eye, so that's cool. Um, you've also got Specialist Shift. She's got swords and can run about and hit things with them, I would presume. That seems likely. Sergeant Steel. Oh, look, it's definitely not the Falcon from the Marvel stuff. Definitely not. Not even a little bit. And of course, ACRM, which is like a big remote controlled robot that is actually controlled by a 15 year old who's like miles away or something. All a bit odd. And they also gave us three evil villain types, which I shall remove from this plastic bucket. A Synthoid, which is like a weird thing with interchangeable arms and that. Seems to have some kind of jet engine in the middle of it. Could be a washer dryer, I'm not entirely sure. Also, one of its tentacles has just dropped off, so that's good. You've also got the drone. This is the bulk of the forces, I presume. And the brute. Oh, big, heavy. I want to say clunky, but I could be being unfair. Maybe he's actually really, really agile. Now look at him. He's called Brute for crying out loud. Anyway, that was the original Final Faction stuff. And they did end up in Poundland in the UK, amazingly, which I'm still genuinely quite impressed with. And yes, for a pound per thing. They didn't last long, I think, because they sold out very quickly, because, you know, they're really, really good for the money. Uh, so you would get basically action figures, and then you would get also weapon packs for said figures, sometimes like specific ones, sometimes generic ones. So it's the old thing of, we can give you a figure for a pound, or a dollar, or whatsoever, but if you want it to be a little bit more interesting and have the extra accessories, pay another dollar and you can get some more bits for it. I mean, it's fair enough, because uh, as long as you can get the figure with some basic weapons for a pound, I think that is all fair enough indeed. Right, let us see who we've got in waves two, three, and three and a half, and goodness knows what of... Final Faction. That, that's not how they say the name in the cartoon. So, most importantly is long-range specialist Scope. Most importantly because he appeared in like one of the early cartoons, but kind of wasn't referred to. He was just kind of there, as if he'd been written out. I wonder if they couldn't get a figure together in time or something. But he's certainly got a figure now, and cool shades and everything. Right, what's going on with him? A long-range specialist, Scope has the ability to keep all targets on the battlefield in his sights. Scope provides lethal cover fire for Alpha Team and always hits his mark. His friend, Mark. Mark's really angry about it. Uh, Scope is a master of long-range weapons using his tech rifle, Stormwatch. With explosive rounds, Scope can always bring the rain. Oh, he controls weather as well. Interesting. Right, <clears throat> what have we got then? There's quite a few little accessories for this one, actually. You've got two pistols, by the looks of it, which I'm genuinely quite surprised with. Here he is. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Look. He's escaped straight from the 90s. Also very, very highly coloured armour, yeah. Standard, very basic articulation. It's a dollar and a little backpack. There we are. So you can put your backpack on. No, you can't because it goes in the other hole. Oh, scope, you fooled us all. Right, that goes on there. Here's his big gun. And jobs are good. Un. And even comes with these two small pistols. Hmm. Which is unnecessary, but nice. Can't argue with that. There we are. That's probably all you really need for scope, isn't it? And look, little things you can put the um, big old sniper rifle on his back if you want it as well. I like it. I like it a lot. Right, that's a good start. What's up next? Ooh, hang on. Covert Ops. Torn. Rip Torn? That would be cool. So this is like a guy in purple with a hood. 
and weird knives or something? What's the deal here? Origin unknown. Mysterious and stoic, Torn is an outside asset to Alpha Team. He appears out of nowhere like a ghost to aid in the battle against the Khan, before once again fading into the shadows. A weapon of choice, Torn prefers his forearm blades. When he can't get up close and personal, his unearthly service weapon does the trick. So he comes in out of nowhere and helps buggers off again. I mean, it's, you know, it's a hobby, isn't it? Fair enough. Um, so what is going on with Torn? Why does his hat come off? Okay. Oh, ho, ho, shit, son. <laughs> okay. Well, um, so, oh, you might have seen that. I don't know. So here he is with his daft hood on, which doesn't seem to fit particularly well. Um, okay. It's keeping him mysterious. But look on the back of his head. He's got some sort of Voldemort thing going on. Some weird, it reminds me of those old Power Lords action figures, if you remember them from the 80s. Oh, holster for the gun, that's interesting. Harry Potter, please come back to our film franchises, they're all shit now, Potter. I think that's what Voldemort would say if he was here. Um, yeah, that's interesting. So, is he a double agent? Now I am evil, now I am good. That's how He-Man worked, or many faces at the very least. Um... Or is he actually just an alien in disguise? An alien from a third race who is helping out. I don't know why it's a third race. There's only one race of aliens. I'm counting the humans as aliens, which doesn't really work. Um, hmm. Yeah, maybe he is of a, an unknown alien race. Maybe he is a Khan who fights against the Khan because he thinks they're... I don't know. I'm making everything up. But I do know. Look, he's got these little blades. Oh, they're nice. They remind me of the hands of a clock. What's the time, Torn? Uh, I don't know. Great, thanks. Um, yeah, that's quite interesting. I also quite like the sort of metallic uh, purpley thing going on there. And that's cool. Cool figure. Ten points. Well done. I'm going to have to start shipping these out of the sofa area, or we are going to be in trouble with that. Right, what have we got? Oh, a first weapons pack. Torn Cyber Arms. <laughs> it's, just, it's just visual gag. Just, sorry. Um, so what have we got here? Just more weird arms to put in by the looks of it. And also something on the back. How does this work? We'll just look at the back, which will tell me. Yes, it does. Oh, interesting. Right, I'm taking the hood off because that's awkward. Pop this on the back. And apparently these then fit on here somehow via some methodology that I'm not understanding. Ah, there we are. Right, I want to make sure I get these the right way round. If not, we'll have ruined everything. There's one, and there's two, and these then presumably fit on like that. Oh no, that's not working too well. Am I getting this right? I think so by the picture. Hmm, now I'm slightly, slightly worried. Yeah, these do not want to go on. Hang on. We're going to snap it. Not liking the feel of this at all. Hmm. Jump cut. There we go. I just had to really force them on. I'm always slightly worried doing that with things from Dollar Tree that have been sent thousands of miles that I don't have a replacement for. But no, it's all fine and dandy. Look at that. He's got extra arms to pick pockets with or something or tap people on the shoulder and run away really fast going, whoa, which I presume is his military speciality. Also, replacement chainsaw arm and... You know, replacement axe arm thing and there's like a weird blade and an even weirder blade and it's pretty good yeah nice little pack of that because it does genuinely add something to the figure specifically really big arms right <clears throat> that'll do what's next on the agenda oh oh wait what is this oh scope long range scope has his own weapons pack that surprises me because he feels fairly fleshed out i mean look he's even got the bloody um holsters here for the pistols actually didn't put those in there we go now we have a fully scoped scope who's dropped his gun there it is so this is just other big guns yeah, not so exciting this one this one feels a little bit unnecessary actually, as compared to the arms but let's have a peek uh yeah that's that's fairly basic well it gives the other people an opportunity to um you know if anyone else in the final faction wants to have some extra big guns their opportunity is here and i cannot get this it going his back that's not good ah there we are so you can just like great now you can go shopping for more guns <laughs> none of these actually seem to look quite as good as the original one but 
Oh, or, or hold property in its hand, which is uh, tremendous. Obviously, there we are. We've got one. Well, nah, I mean, it's just a load of big rifles for your action figures. There. It's all right for a dollar. I mean, they're decently sculpted. Um, got a sort of slightly sci-fi futuristic look to everything. Um, yeah, it's fine, but it's not as exciting as weird arms. What possibly could be? Right, time for another new member of the team. Except this one was quite heavily featured in the cartoon originally, I think. Churro! FDO Mech, piloted by Churro. So, FDO Mech Fido, you see what's going on there? Oh, I've opened this one. Look, oh, we'll have to let it out. If not, it'll fall everywhere. So, <clears throat> big robot dog, innit? Uh, like in Wallace and Gromit. Steadfast's loyal canine companion, Churro's bite is every bit as bad as his bark. On the field of battle, Churro pilots the Fido Mech to protect his best friend from all threats. All threats? Even existential ones? Mm, even bacteria? I don't think so. Churro's Fido Mech can be modified for flight. Of course it can. Or ground battle. After all, nothing is scarier than a flying chihuahua with guns. You can't argue with that, folks. So, basically, you've got Big Dog Mech, which runs in and barks and shoots lasers out of his teeth or something. I'm not entirely sure. But it opens up because it is literally piloted by this little dude who the camera refuses to focus on. There he is, here's Churro, who is a, literally a chihuahua. A chihuahua with a handle, so he can be picked up and moved around by other members of the team. <laughs> ah, ju just what everyone needed. Dun, 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 dun. Um, yeah, or he just goes in here, presumably. Woof. Now he will fuck shit up canine style. That's pretty cool, isn't it? You can't argue with giant robot dogs, particularly not giant robot dogs. They don't have a tiny dog piloting them inside. I mean, that's what it's all about. You can't get him out afterwards except by shaking him out like a penny from an old-fashioned money box. But let's not worry about that. Here we are. You can sit in it backwards. Like, What was the TV show where they sat backwards in cars and drove them while looking at TV screen? It was Captain Scarlet. There we are. I've remembered it. That was fun. Oh, look at the tail. It's like some weird rotating... Um, looks like he's going to give everyone Wi-Fi with it, actually. This is pretty good. I mean, look, you can't ask for more than that, can you? Ridiculous robot dog piloted by an even more ridiculous one. Fantastic. Right, now we need to get into... Dun, 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 dun. The Khan! The evil types. So, something about the uh, evil Khan in the first set, they were all generic. Brute, drone, synthoid, no named characters. Well, that's all a-changing with Crepitus, the bounty hunter. Um, there's so much light reflected, I'm not entirely sure what this one looks like yet. We shall find out when we open it up. So, Crepitus is a relentless bounty hunter. He is tasked with eliminating loose ends for the Khan. Crepitus has no sympathy for his targets. He is only focused on the task at hand and will do anything to complete it. His latest bounty is that of the Defector Torn. Oh, there we are. We've got some Torn lore, everybody. So Torn is a Khan who has defected. Crepitus uses his jagged arm blades enhanced with poisson, that's French for oh, poison, to eliminate his targets. His companion, Flea, <laughs> helps scout out and find targets quite. Does it come? Oh, there's Flea, I presume. Oh, cool. Comes with it. Like it, like it. Right. Here we go. Right. Oh my goodness, he's got some sort of one-sided dreadlocks thing going on to give him some personality. Okay. Giant uh, legs. The, the feet that look like they're off some sort of cow catcher or something. Uh, okay. Okay. The Oh, these are the wrist blades, one presumes. Made of pure green energy. <coughs> no, they're just plastic. Uh, and oh, here's, Fle oh, here's Flea. We've got to see Flea, everybody. There we are. We're all fleed up and we're happy about it. That's pretty cool. He doesn't come with any sort of gun whatsoever, which seems a bit daft. Mind you, to be fair, you've got so many extra guns from bloody weapon packs the first time around, you're probably all right without having to buy extra Khan guns. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like the little silver highlights. I mean, none of the paint is fantastic on these. Actually, it's just not bad. An old... Uh torn here actually thinking about it but um yeah it's all very basic stuff it's a dollar each we have established this yeah cool like it i like the fact there's a named enemy this is all positive next up oh another named khan general diabol oh my god he he is he's a bit of a humdinger he is a large figure right G queen malara 
is that the head of the Khan? I don't remember that being established before, or I forgot, one of the two. Queen Malara's most trusted general. Diabol is a ruthless mastermind who never fails. While Diabol prefers to dictate the rules of engagement from his command centre, he has no fear of the battlefield and is happy to engage his enemy in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Diabol is a brutal warrior who uses his spiked and armoured limbs in combat, adorned with bones of his enemies. Rude. This juggernaut is unstoppable. Hmm, okay. Oh, yeah, big lump of plastic in this one. No accessories. Interesting. It is merely general diable. I'm not liking the two-tone plastic here. I do wish it was all the same colour. The body is a very different colour to the arms and legs. You may have noticed that. Far pinkier. Uh, if the whole thing was a deeper red or the whole thing was a sort of unpleasant pink, like he'd been stripped of flesh or something, that would work as well. Head's very wobbly. Hmm. Yeah, not so convinced of that one. I do like the design, though. I mean, he does look... Yeah, his little pinhead and his giant evil body. Here, give us a gun. This weird thing that looks like it's been taken directly from Halo will do. Yep. Yeah, fine. There he is, being all evil. Let's have him standing next to Steadfast, actually. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I see why they didn't give any accessories. There's a lot of plastic in this bloody figure. Um, it's very solid, actually. The arms and legs are made of sort of solid rubbery stuff, which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I do quite like it, actually like it quite a lot. Do wish it had the same colour all over, because it's really not working for me in the middle of being a different colour, but other than that, you can't complain. They're only a... Oh, I'm going to stop saying that now. Right, next up... <clears throat> oh, it's, it's another... another new guy. From Alpha Team 1, it's Underwater Specialist Riptide. Ah, oh, Underwater Specialist, who only get to actually do something once every 14 cartoons, probably. If there's anything like the guy from Centurions who I think was called Max Ray. Anyway, Riptide is a skilled combat and rescue diver from New England. When he's not fishing or indulging in canned tuna, he's Neil Breen. He spends his free time helping the local wildlife die. Riptide's two forearm-mounted harpoons help him ensnare the enemy. He also uses water-activated sensors to warn him of nearby car activity. Water-activated sensors? Surely he would be putting sensors underwater and that would sense movement or something. Just having a sensor that sends him a message when it gets wet doesn't sound particularly useful, especially if he is the underwater special... Uh, let's not think about that. Let's not think about that. Right, what we got going on here? Right, he's an older fella by the looks of it. We've got some white hair. Uh, very military sort of haircut. Actually, a little bit more severe than that. Face. Yeah, pretty good sculpt, actually. The sculpts seem a little bit better this time round. I don't know if that's... Uh, I think... I say that, actually. I think it was just Steadfast who had quite a bad sculpt. His old oh, focus, focus. Thank you. Old torn here isn't bad. This is yeah. This is one of the best faces we've had, I think, actually. Although saying that, shift was pretty solid. They did spend some time on that. One. Anyway, look, we're getting off the point. We need to put his scuba gear on, which uh, I presume goes on there like that. Ah, there we are. Tremendous. And more stuff. They're really into stuff that sticks on arms this time round, as you may well have noticed. Right, you get out of the way. That's pretty nifty. That's that's actually turned into quite a nice figure. I thought that was going to be a bit bland before the stuff goes on, but that really works. I'm also impressed by the way the mask and the rebreather stuff here works really well. Like, it fits on precisely and looks really good. Ooh, can't argue with that. Bloody hell. Great. All right, go over there, and you can be underwater later. I'm not the camera. Don't tell it. There we are, it's back. Right, uh, who have we got next? Ooh, some more Khan stuff. Perimeter Defense Hunter. Ooh, like an automated drone thing. Interesting. Right, come on me out. Hang on, I'm getting excited. I haven't read the back of the packet yet. <clears throat> Huntra is an agile, scurrying turret, <laughs> aren't we all, that pins down enemies before striking brutally. Quiet and stealthy, Hunter is a nightmare that is all too real. Ooh. Oh my god. Oh, look at it. It's like an insect bastard. Ah, and on top, double missile. I don't think we've had anything that fires missiles yet. I don't think we have still, because that isn't clicking into anything. Oh, is it, has it done so there? Oh, we've got little buttons ready for spring-powered power. Pewing. Oh, that, that, that hasn't worked. <laughs> Yay! There we are. Oh, it works quite well, actually. This really, really reminds me... Oh, what were they called? The Screen, was it? From Command & Conquer... 
was it Command and Conquer 3? Oh, I can't remember, they had subtitles and stuff, didn't they? But the alien race from Command and Conquer had a definite look of this to it. Really like that. That is a very interesting, a very cool design of a horrible thing that scampers around. And then before you know it, it's on you and it's like, bang, bang, with its missiles. And then it's run out of missiles, so it has to go to Argos to buy some more. Absolutely fantastic. Right, that's really good. I'm hoping there is... I'm sure there is a Final Faction equivalent. I saw it in the box earlier. Um, oh, I can't find it now, annoyingly. Yes, I can. Here we are. Perimeter Defense X4 Turret, the good guys version. Uh, the X4 Turret is a mobile defense platform that provides suppressive fire regardless of terrain. Part of the Alpha Team mech arsenal, the X4 rains fire on the enemy. Basically, it's a double missile launcher, just it's one of the human ones, not one of the naughty alien ones. Oh, look at that. Multiple, ah, uh, I feel like it needs a bit of articulation in the middle, but okay. <laughs> yep, right. Give us. Uh, oh, I just don't want to. Uh, oh no, there we are. Got to. I think you've got to have it, so the little fins on them are horizontal. That's my tip for the day. Uh, that failed. Oh no, it's all good. So, um, looks a bit crap with them in. They're sort of too long. Do you know what I mean? Uh, fire them away anyway. No, pewing. Pew oh, it did work. That's weird. Had to press it twice. Well, <clears throat> I like that quite a bit. Absolutely no paint on it, but kind of doesn't need it because it's got that sort of just metal industrial look. So, yeah, that's all right. I, I do prefer the evil one because the evil one looks fucking amazing. And this is fine. I mean, it, it does the job and it's got your legs and it's a dollar. Sorry, I thought I'd stop saying that, but I just can't get over it. Um, Yeah, good stuff. Nice additions. Nice little accessories. Right, next up on the agenda. Oh, my God. P131 Automated Drone. Additional weapons packs sold separately. Ah, oh, right, so we'll get a bit more of this one. The P131 drones were developed and built by Boyd. Who? Tommy Boyd, the old British children's television presenter? The drones are used extensively in combat and rescue operations where the Alpha team could be outnumbered. Which I presume is all the time, because there's only like six of them or something. Um, deploying the P131 drones helped to even the odds. The P131 drone is equipped with dual 90mm M54 cannons, built-in thrusters give the drone added mobility to get to those hard-to-reach areas. Under the rim of the toilet, where the bacteria grows. <laughs> <clears throat> right. Let's have a look. Oh, just a chunky boy. This. Oh my god, this just looks like... Do you know what this looks like? One of those cheap knockoff Gundam toys you would find in the 90s in, like, uh, seaside shops. Yeah. Well, it's a little mech walker. The legs don't... Yeah, it's got solid rubbery legs, but they don't... Uh, yeah, I feel like you do some articulation there, but okay. Yeah, there we are. Yeah, this one doesn't excite me so much. I think because it's a design I've sort of seen many, many times in the past. But, you know, it does the job. We need to find the weapons pack for it and see if that makes it more exciting. Please be this one. It is P131 Thunderbolt. Pack works with Alpha Team P131 character. So this is basically the rest of the figure. Because this had too much plastic and made it too expensive to put the accessories in or something. Right. You don't seem to get a lot for your dollar on this. Well... <sighs> What you get is fine, we're just so used to having these massive lumps of stuff now. Right, let's have a look. Uh, oh god, hang on. Should have looked at the instructions. Oh, it all goes on the top. Interesting. Right, so how on earth does that fit on? That's weird, and I'm confused by it. So, we've got the big ones there. Ah, look! Right, now it's making sense. It's actually got little attachments for everything. So, presumably, those go on. It looks like that would go on there, but that's not going to go on there because they are clearly too big. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Aha! That must fit in there, surely. Yes! Oh no, Ooh, thought I'd broken it for a second. Nope. That's something I do like about these. They're super cheap and yet haven't managed to break one. Uh, oh, there's extra holes on the back. Is that where those things go on? Yes, I see the pegs for them. Right. After only 50 years, we will have this one in position. I really should stop attaching them to the figures before attaching them to the other bits, because it's just making things awkward. Go on. Get in there. Yes! Ah, we managed it! After destroying our hands. Well, there we are. Now he's got big missile launchers on top. That is adding something. Cool, cool. And presumably these go on the sides. I'm doing that thing of attaching to the figure first again, aren't I? Uh, that'd be the other way round, wouldn't it? 
and click. Oh no, these are quite easy to put on. Good. Tell you what, once these go in, they're not coming off very easily. Not necessarily a bad thing. Oh yes, now he can fly with his slightly crappy looking drone wings. I don't believe they would lift him up because he looks really heavy. Uh, missile launchers add something. These have added some, oh, I don't know, it felt like it needs, I don't know, wings come out the side or something, but they've done that several times before, so I do understand, perhaps. Well, that's all right. Um, the little bit of dry brushing on the green helps to give it a metallic look. The head looks like one of those modems that they would give you in the early days of broadband. Um, yeah, it's fine. That's one of the least exciting ones, I think, of the crazy ideas we've had thus far. Speaking of crazy ideas... Uh, here's an evolution pack <laughs> for the synthoid for the old boy here okay his things on the back have fallen off that's probably for the best so this oh evolves him into some sort of other thing oh interesting what have we got azora a tentacled nightmare azora reaches out and entraps enemies before the synthoid drags them to their doom Kutagoth. The plasmoid discharge of the Tagoth, as we'll now pronounce it, cripples man and machine, leaving both torn asunder. Ooh, like harsh language. And with them, with the dragon-like wings of with them, the synthoids are able to take their warfare airborne, bringing destruction from every angle, even 37 degrees. Right, this is interesting to me. Let's see what's going on. So, basically, it's got wings. These must go on the back somewhere. Is that how the wings attach? Yes. I see how this is working. Oh, you could definitely have problems getting the little bits and bobs on these. Oh, look at that. Oh, his arms have come off. Well, I hope you've got a new arm. Yes, you have. There we are. Get in there. Oh, doesn't want to tip. He's got it. He's got himself a new arm, everybody. With the same sort of um, weird I don't know, jet engine thing that you've got going on in the chest, which is interesting. Right. Okie doke other one. How did I do that? We shall make sure this uh, fits the same pattern. Again, I'm not entirely convinced that this would fly from these tiny little wings on the back, but uh, we'll let them off. Maybe it's some magical alien biology thing. And this, apparently, is that? That's a replacement for an arm, I think. Hang on. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, dear. So you've got this like really high tech looking gun arm and then the rest of it is like some sort of weird biological nightmare. That is cool. I really like that they've given you these cool extra accessories to the older characters to completely change them up. And the synthoid is obviously the one to be doing that with because I think it's the only one with the removable arms. So nice. Yeah, I enjoy this conceptually. Right, next up, <clears throat> more calm stuff. The Decimator, Perimeter Defense Decimator. That looks even more like something from Command and Conquer 3, doesn't it? My goodness. A defense turret that is strong as a rhino, Decimator is a living weapon. Ruthless in pursuit of opponents, Decimator delivers a deadly blow with its spore strike. Shouldn't have the apostrophe there, I don't think, folks. Spore strike, okay. Which just looks like a plastic missile, but hey, that's kind of what we're expecting. Ooh, okay. Leg has come off. Let's replace that using the power of leg replacement. Okay, yep. Oh, that leg's always going to be loose, I think. Not great. Quite like the design, though. You've got this weird thing in the centre. This is so... It's. I know I keep saying it, but that is so screen from Command & Conquer, isn't it? Right. Fire. Oh, that was a very loose trigger. I feel like that fired before I even pressed the button. Um, oh, uh, yeah. Put that with that. That is cool as hell. Really, really liking that. Yep, 10 points. All the different colors work. Yeah, that is a really nice little toy there. Tip top, yep, enjoying that thoroughly. And it's got horrible bladed legs. So you wouldn't want to fall over because it'd come along and like, Kr oh look, I'm a double agent. And all that kind of stuff. Right, <clears throat> who have we got next? Oh, there's, there's more weird sets of bits for the screen. Drone. Scourge. Khan humanoid characters. Well, let's take the actual drone. That would make the most sense. That's this boy, isn't it? Hello, my name's Billy. I'm a drone. Nice to meet you. Uh, if you need anything, give me a bell. Right. Shiten. <laughs> hey! This vicious dual-pronged weapon bridges the distance between enemies in a most painful fashion. It's... 
it's a stick. Luminar, an energy weapon of extreme power, this handheld firearm hits whatever Scython cannot reach. Refreshes the parts other Scourge cannot reach. And Druxil, inspired by a serpent on the Khan homeworld, this back-mounted cannon is capable of firing venomous rounds that dissolve any surface. Does it dissolve lime scale? Are the Khan actually really about cleaning toilets? I'm beginning to wonder. Um, etching fear into all Khan enemies. Okay, then. So we've got Loki's staff from the first Bloody Avengers film. Um, whatever one of the Infinity Gems that had in. Right, that can come off. That can go away. You can have this go on. Again, I'm liking this mixing up the more generic older characters into different types. Because in theory, you could buy like two of these, they're a dollar each, and then give them different um, bag stuff. Yeah, I like it. Oh, this looks like this might fit onto an arm in some manner. Okay. Bit of a twin blade. It reminds me a bit, actually. Talking about Avenger stuff, it looks a bit like that weird twin blade thing that Thanos has, doesn't it? And this which is a... does it go that way? It feels like it should go the other way. Um, hang on, this is going to be really difficult to get in the hand, actually, isn't it? Ah, oh, there we are. Now it's worked. Not entirely convinced by that one. Hmm, that was more like a melee weapon or something. But, you know, add something. Makes all your old figures new again. Can't complain. These things do look like brushes for cleaning something. <laughs> I think this might be a car washing set, but hey. Yeah, like it. Different colours as well. Adding everything. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, and we've got another one of those. Striker for the Brute. Yeah, as predicted. Where is Brutey boy? Here he is. They've all got one now. All the old Khan are new again. Everything right is wrong again. Because the Brute's got his Striker pack, which comes with Glaven. <laughs> Glaven, a brutal instrument of destruction made by Professor Frink. The Glaven is wielded by the Brutes with bone-crunching efficiency. Just a big hammer, basically. Straether, a shield that is also a battering ram. In the hands of a Brute, anything is a weapon. <gasps> Even the word buttress. Drathos. Drathos attacks with its dual heads, cutting any surface with its razor-sharp jagged... Oh, hang on. Is it a little extra monstrous thing? Yeah. Oh no. No, I thought this was like an autonomous creature, like that flea thing from the Bounty Hunter, but no. No, okay. Uh, how on earth you'd hold this? I think that must... Yeah, that, that, that'll do. I got a, got a big bloody bug in my arm. I don't like it very much. Right, this can go on the back. I feel like we've seen slightly too many weird cannon things on the back of the... Uh, Khan, they're all sort of really, and they're always two twin things that poke up over the back. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm getting bored of those now, but okay. The massive, good god, that's some sort of end game Dark Souls weapon. That's the stuff. Look at that. My goodness. And you can attach it to the back with a little peg. Yeah, that that's, yeah, that, that's the moneymaker in this set, isn't it? <laughs> Worth the price of admission alone. Massive, brutal, ugly hammer for smashings. Amazing. Yeah, well, there. Yeah, the, the concept is great. You know, get the generic old baddie figures and mix them up a bit with, for, for your dollar. Like it. Like it a lot. Right. Oh, we've got two more figures before we get into the vehicles. Yes. They're doing vehicles. And to my understanding, they weren't any more expensive than the figures. I can't get my head around it either. Right. Let's look at Combat Specialist. Amari. Additional weapons packs sold separately. My understanding is that hasn't actually appeared in shops yet. Uh, Amari is an Alpha Team soldier from New York. I'm from New York. New York City who uses her size and strength in battle. Amari fights for her family, proudly wearing her father's Air Force bomber jacket. Amari will use anything at her disposal, but her favourite weapon is her modified baseball bat she named Slugger. It hits a home run every time. I'm getting a little bit of 80s Grace Jones vibe from this, which I thoroughly approve of. Oh, out you come. Out you come. Oh, ah. Right. Oh, she only comes with Slugger. Oh dear. Well, that's a bit naff. The rest are all going in with massive rifles and that. That's why you need that scope pack, isn't it? So she's got a gun. <laughs> Welcome to Alpha Team. What weapons do you have? Well, I brought my lucky baseball bat. Oh, and you got any guns? Well, I thought you'd supply guns. You got loads. Oh, no, no. No, no, you, you got to bring your own. Now you tell me. Right. Let's pop that in there. Is it me? Or is this figure really tall? Oh, no, it's not fitting in that hand too well. What about this one? Come on, you've got to be able to hold Slugger. There we are. Um, 
Face is not bad, not bad, yeah. Enough detail on that. I'm enjoying the 80s punk aesthetic haircut and the sort of textured sci-fi armour under the bomber jacket there. Okay, let me get... Uh, where's Steadfast? Uh, here he is. Oh yeah, she's really tall. Ha <laughs> ha! Amazonian thing going on. I like it. I like this character a lot, actually. This... It feels like she has crawled out of some sort of 1980s director VHS action film, possibly made in Italy, and she's here to fuck shit up, and I think that's great. Yeah, like that a lot. That is that is very much in keeping with the aesthetic. I just like the way she's really tall as well. Cool. Right, that's very good. I would like to see her weapons pack. Unfortunately, as I say, I don't think it exists yet, so we can't, but never mind. We've got perimeter defence crawlers instead. Okay. Looks like two spiders glued together. Small in stature, but deadly in numbers, crawlers can quickly swarm their enemies. Crawlers are the Khan's first line of defence with their armour-piercing limbs. Ooh. Hang on, do we get two of them? Yeah! Holy shit, you get two of the little buggers. So, the person who sent me this said these look like they're straight out of that uh, Lost in Space film they made in the 90s. Yeah, he's not wrong, is he? <laughs> It's not wrong at all. Quite a lot of articulation on the legs there. Oh, the mandibles move as well. It's definitely a little bit of a screen look. Two holes at the back, possibly for a future weapons pack or something. Okay. Yeah, I'm liking these. These new Khan things are definitely where it's at design-wise, I think. Oh, look at horrible little living, living knives. They're like a bag of living knives. Come to carve you up. I don't know why everything makes that noise today, but these definitely do. Yep, I like that a lot. Also, the um, yeah, I think it's quite heavy dry brushing they've used on the top there, is it? Little red eyes. Oh, yeah, that really works. Really works. Right, that's bloody tremendous. And now we get into the vehicles, which are kind of sold in two parts, as we were saying, where you've got the weapons pack and then the main vehicle itself. But... They still look pretty good on their own, I think. This is the final faction, Alpha Team 1, Arrow ATV. What can we learn about this? The Arrow ATV has a compact design that allows it to easily zip through the most rugged terrain, and also means we don't have to put that much plastic in so we can still sell it for a dollar, um, while defending the Earth from the Khan alien threat. With the Arrow ATV armor and weapons pack sold separately, it's virtually indestructible. I don't believe that. It looks like it's made out of a Charles climbing frame. But let's see. Right, we've got a bag. Oh, we're going to have to build this one, I think. Doesn't look like it's going to be particularly difficult. Mind you, with how things are fitting together earlier. Oh! Hmm, that might take a couple of minutes. Tell you what, jump cut. Screech! Is a noise... Oh, is a noise vehicles make. <laughs> She's fallen off the back! Ah, quickly! Dr. General Diabol, you look like a completely safe medical professional for humans. She is fine. You see, you can't argue with facts like that. Right, you sit there as we look at the ATV arrow thingamajiggy. Yep, yeah, it does look a little bit like a children's climbing frame, I won't lie, but, you know, I think we kind of expect that, don't we? Um, it's got a shape to it, it's got a decent seat, the figure fits in it well, and look, old scope here can actually hold on to the control yoke thing. That is something that bugs me when you can't do that in uh, toy vehicles, so that's good. Wheels move around nicely and all that. Uh, very easy reaction. You've got a little thing for people to stand on the back. For some reason, not working too well for her. But overall, yeah, it does the bloody job, doesn't it? It'll get them in and out of action super quick. And more to the point, uh, it's pretty solid in its construction and won't break when the kids are playing with it. So can't really argue with that. But of course, you can make it more substantial with the Battle Ready Conversion Kit, Arrow ATV Weapons and Armour. Where is the information? Here we are. So, oh, we've got lots of panels and lots of guns, basically. Once upgraded with weapons and armour, the Arrow ATV instantly strikes fear into the heart of the Khan. Weapons provide a powerful high rate of fire, and armour makes the Arrow ATV the ultimate assault vehicle. Well, okay then. I'm going to jump cut to having stuck all that on. Beep, beep, honk, honk. Yes, look at this. Look at that. That's the stuff. I mean, it does effectively double the price of the vehicle, but my god, that looks, yeah, far more solid, doesn't it? You've got this armour on the front, which does seem to pop off. Oh no, it's gone there quite solid now. I take that back. Big old bumper, you've got side armour, and all the guns on the top. So now when Steadfast stands on the back, he can shoot properly. I found out why she fell off. Her feet are too big. They actually, uh, her giant boots don't fit on the back properly. So she'll have to drive or stand by it whistling. 
Oh, she's not very good at whistling. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, I mean, it's two dollars, isn't it? Or whatever, or two dollars fifty, or whatever. It's not very expensive and it does the bloody job. Yeah, nice little vehicle. Never seen any vehicle of that type for this sort of action figure that cheap before. Tip top, hats off. Very, very nice indeed. Right, go and park it around here. Beep, 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 beep. I am reversing. Beep, 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 beep. There we are. Nice reverse park. As we now look at, wait for it. Oh, I can't get out of the box. The Rumbler. The Khan vehicle, which looks like something out of the Skeletor would have in the old He-Man cartoons. So the way this works is, uh, I don't know. Ah, here it is. The Rumbler, Khan's lightweight excavation vehicle is used for pillaging the Earth's natural resources. Upgrade with the Rumbler armor and weapons pack sold separately and convert it into a heavy duty ground assault vehicle. Okay, I might do that. Oh wait, I've already got it. Ooh, oh, instructions. Let's see, oh. It's a big round thing. This doesn't look too complicated, actually. Mind you, they're all a bit fiddly to put together. I am finding. You have to be quite strong with them. And that always worries me with this kind of thing. Jump cut to complete. And we name this General Deopold's Weird Chariot. <laughs> yep, it's like something from an alternate Roman Empire or something. Got a little wheel on the back for stabilisation. Two big wheels at the side. And one of these big jet engine things on the front. And away he goes. Interesting. It does look kind of incomplete with the big holes in the front there, in a way that the ATV wasn't. But okay, still get away with it. You might need the weapons pack a bit more for this one. But uh, yeah, interesting. Not a design I was expecting. The whole of the Khan stuff is very interesting visually, and I dig it. Hmm. I'll tell you what I did really like, by the way. The instructions all have really specific names. Exo wheel arm, exoskeleton, vertebrae wheel back, vertebrae side wheels. See, nice little bit of attention to detail. Right, you stay, because it's time for the final thing we have. Weapons and armor for the Rumbler, which turn into a deadly scorpion bastard by the looks of it. Uh, hang on, what does the box say? Upgrading with weapons, uh, the Rumbler transforms from a lightweight excavation vehicle are they archaeologists now? Into a heavy duty ground assault vehicle. Weapons provide unmatched attack firepower and makes the Rumbler an extremely formidable assault vehicle. Kids don't want excavation vehicles, they want explodey vehicles. Oh, 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 we have survived. Right. Two big arms and a big tail. Ooh, very, very heavy, solid things, these. Crikey. Right, so I think this is not going to be difficult to work out how this goes together. That pole must go in there. And there we are. He's now got something in front of his face so he can't see where he's going. Genius. Yep, they're definitely going to win the day now. And these monstrous claws. Monstrous claw. Hang on, am I putting these in right? Yes, I am. Monstrous claw one. Monstrous claw to oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh for what is essentially three bits of rubber, that has really transformed the look of that, hasn't it? My god. Yeah, that is it's really chunky. It's really sort of a big, you know, thing in the hand. This is a big figure, old diabol there, and that is a big old vehicle. Bloody hell. A really horrible sort of vaguely insectoid design. Really digging it. Yep, that is really good. Um, I'm so impressed by the vehicles in this range. It is unbelievable. Bloody fantastic. And what happens if they meet head on? What happens when an unstoppable force meets an immobile object? That! I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, that's probably more excitement than you'll get out of the next three Marvel films from what I've seen in the trailers. Right, you go back there. Oh no. They won. They pulled it off. The aliens have won. Right, you go back there. Because now I just have to pick my two favourite things. Oh, there's a lot to like in all this new stuff, isn't there? Like a real large amount to like. I love Spinny Head on Torn there and his weird arms. But I think my two favourites, purely from design point of views, really, if I can find it. Jump cut because I found it. Yep, my favourites are horrifying spidery insect missile launcher thing. Really, really like that. I do like the other one with the three legs as well, but the leg keeps coming off. And yeah, this just has, I don't know, more subtlety to it. And... Amari and her seriously 80s look I am thoroughly enjoying. Tip bloody top. What can we say really other than I think these Final Facts things are still great. They are really, really bloody good. For, for the money, just absolutely astonishing that you can buy so much 
for a dollar or a pound or a euro or however it ends up being in your local currency. One dollar twenty-five in some places, I don't bloody know. But I do know, yeah, I've, we've not seen anything of this quality and more to the point of this imagination before at this low price point. And frankly, hats off and a big round of applause for everyone involved. Like, boy, boy.